Hey, I'm Katie Wawa, and you're watching The Record Review. This week on the record review, I am reviewing Too True by Dum Dum Girls. Um, it looks very cool, kind of a Bat of Lashes vibe going on there. And um, when you get the physical record, you also get a card which has a download code for you to download the MP3s of all of the tracks on the album. So you get the physical record and then also the sort of digital record. Another thing that I wanted to show you guys is how awesome this actual vinyl is. It's not just a black vinyl, it's totally blue. Um, it's got like a tie-dye effect going on, so it's, it's really pretty and it kind of matches my record player, so I like it. So that's all just the superficial stuff, um, but let's get down to the actual review. Choo Choo was released at the end of January of this year and it is the third studio album by Dum Dum Girls. They previously released I Will Be and Only In Dreams which were both very different albums, but I'll talk about that a little more later. So who are Dum Dum Girls? Mainly it's Dee Dee, who's the front woman, and she also wrote this album and writes the music and the lyrics. Dee Dee is originally from LA, but she is currently based in New York City. What's pretty cool about this is that Dum Dum Girls are currently on tour, so if you like what you hear today, then you might want to go online and check out if they're going to be playing somewhere near you. As with their previous records, this record is still that sort of shoegaze indie pop style. So if you like that, then you might like this. If you don't like that, then you probably won't like this. A lot of songs on Too True sound like they could end up on the soundtrack for a Sofia Coppola film. Um, they had that kind of vibe about them, that Virgin Suicides air. Too True is really a departure from previous albums by Dum Dum Girls. They've had this sort of indie garage rock style, um, very Californian surf almost in some of their riffs. But Too True is very much inspired by the 1980s British music scene. I rise and shine, and I look behind Your eyes are black exes of hate and of hexes So Dee Dee actually posted a kind of artist statement on the Dum Dum Girls website which explains a lot of her influences and how she went about writing this album. But among the people who she said were influencing this, which is interesting, were the Stone Roses, Madonna, Susie and the Banshees, Suede. The vocals on Too True are definitely inspired by Madonna. I couldn't really hear much of Susie and the Banshees, but maybe they're lurking in there somewhere. The music itself seems to be influenced a lot by the Smiths, and although Dee Dee doesn't directly cite them in her statement, she's previously talked about how much she's inspired by Morrissey and the Smiths. Interestingly, it's more the Johnny Marr side of the Smiths than Morrissey himself. It's that sort of over-amped, very synthy style with the vocals fading into the background, and it sounds really cool. So basically, if you can imagine what would happen if the Smiths had a female singer who sounded a lot like Madonna, then that's pretty much what this record is. So Dee Dee has never really tried to hide how much of an influence the Smiths have had on her. She's previously covered There Is A Light That Never Goes Out. It's ironic that that cover sounds less like the Smiths than a track on this album, The Lost Boys and Girls Club. The Manchester influence on Dum Dum Girls' sound really interesting because as somebody who's from England, I have very specific associations with that kind of music. This is sort of grim up north, grey terraced houses all in a line, everything's very bleak and you know there's a lot of like unemployment. And so to hear that kind of coming up again in this record was really interesting. It made me very curious about what had drawn Dee Dee and Dum Dum Girls to that kind of sound. Dee Dee is an American who is from LA, lives in New York now. I would absolutely love to be able to ask Dee Dee what it is about the Manchester Mancunian sound that really attracted her to it and like why she uses it within her music because it's such an interesting and to me odd match but it sounds really cool and it works really well. 
I found kind of a clue about what it is that Dee Dee finds that kind of attracted her to that sound in the open letter artist statement on her website. She basically describes how when she was writing this record, her vocals were so destroyed from being on this epic tour that she needed to sort of take a rest to recuperate before she could record it and she was in this sort of exile. She describes being in her tiny bedroom studio in New York City and just writing and writing and being influenced and it really reminded me of Morrissey's self-imposed exile before his career really kicked off. Like that sort of the individual impulsive compulsive individual being left alone just to like create and write. Um, but then it's ironic that the vocals and the lyrics of the record don't really sound anything like Morrissey, whereas the music of the record sounds exactly like Johnny Marr. In her statements, Dee Dee also cites various poets, including some 19th century French poets, as influencing the record. You can definitely see that. Specifically, uh, there are two songs that make it very clear how influenced she was by them. There's Evil Blooms, which is just the direct translation of Baudelaire's Les Fleurs du Mal, and then there is <laughs> Rambo Eyes. I feel bad because the part of me that like winces a bit during the song is when she pronounces it Rimbo, and I was a French minor, and so not not like a minor in France, but I studied French to a minor level within my degree, and so I I just hear this Rimbo, and it it's a little jarring. <laughs> It's very catchy as well, which is annoying because you end up accidentally mispronouncing a word that you kind of know. And the, it's that's a word as well, like Rambo is kind of one of those ones that's quite hard for English speakers to pronounce anyway, so Dee Dee, what are you doing to us? A really cool thing that I want to talk about in this review is that just over a week ago, Dee Dee announced on the Dum Dum Girls website that Vice and Mocha TV had produced a short film completely inspired by the track Are You Okay from Too True and it is written by Brett Easton Ellis, which is very cool, and directed by Brewer, who's an interesting directing team. It's a super stylized short film and it's very evocative of like a really mysterious Land. It's very Brett Easton Ellis as well. The Although I will warn you that after watching the film, you're going to have Are You Okay stuck in your head for the next couple of days. You should absolutely go check out that film. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description below so that you can find it. So, too true, dum dum girls, what's the verdict? Well, I'm going to give it four stars. It's a really cool record, if you can imagine The Smiths meets Madonna. It's a very interesting mix, especially when you think about how everything nowadays is auto-tuned or like very highly stylized. To hear that more like lo-fi sound is really cool. And also to get like the whole of the 80s just colliding, like Smiths, Madonna, <laughs> That's what it is. Unfortunately, I am taking a star off for the mispronunciation of a French poet, which has further confused my own pronunciation. And, of course, as I do every week on the record review, it's not just how many stars the record gets, but should you buy it on vinyl. For Too True, I think that seeing as you get the MP3 download as well as the record, you're not really losing much. You get two things. You get all of it in one anyway, so if you have a record player, Definitely. However, it's not one of those records that's going to sound completely different on vinyl than it does digitally. And in fact, as I was listening to it, I really, really wanted the album on cassette tape. I know that sounds weird, but like I really wanted to have like a little cassette and just be able to listen to it. But if you just feel like saving money and just buying the download, then I would say that's exactly the same quality you're going to get. Honestly. Like it looks cool. If you want something that looks really cool, definitely. If you don't really care about how it looks and you just want it on your iPod anyway, then just just download it. Be fine. 
Alright, well, that is the verdict on Too True. I will be back next week with a review of Bombay Bicycle Club's latest release. So long, see you tomorrow. And on that note, bye! See you next week! <laughs>